<laughs> You're trying to organize coffee. <laughs> yeah. I have my coffee. I don't have my coffee yet. And if you want to know how we made this film, ending up here in Silla in Abu Dhabi, well, we're going to roll through it right now. It's been six days of quite intense. It has been relaxing in some stages, but it's been quite intense to cover a thousand uh, a, odd kilometers. A nice, actually a nice mix. Yeah. Because there were, there were parts of that were very intense filming. Yes. There were parts that were very intense driving, the mountain driving to me, but that to me is fantastic. Uh, some long stretches which are a bit dull, but yes. not that many actually. Yeah, we had to catch up with some time. But we didn't have any really long days no. of driving. We no. didn't, which is great. So the reason why we, well, the thought process by putting the show together was I filmed with Andrew twice before mm. this show over here. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you guys, the audience, on what it takes to put a film together like this. Now that was the idea. Now, <laughs> Right, so priority number one is obviously to make your show successful. So okay, we're running enough. around getting cameras okay. and okay. we've got a short window to film a sunrise a sunset yes we've got probably the golden hour in the winter right now it's probably down to 45 minutes yes and we've got to make sure that that's good so us to roll cameras of Andrew shooting something or trying to interrupt him while he's getting that final beauty shot is almost impossible and but that was the thought However, we have got footage of Andrew and how he's filming and what he's doing. But what I wanted to do over here is just run through the entire show and explain to us a couple of things that we couldn't discuss while you were having the shoot. Right. Fair enough. So, let's start in the beginning. We yes. went up almost, well, a thousand meters above sea level. Mm -hmm. And that track, switchback track, is incredibly steep. It's a low yes. range, first gear. Yes. There are so many tracks available like that here in the United Arab Emirates as well as Oman. Yes. What advice would you give to you know, creators starting out there on how to capture that? Because film flattens things out. Ha! <clears throat> okay, uh, it's one of the most difficult things. It's actually, if you got, because it was steep, the pass. Very, yeah. Okay, so the first thing is safety it has to be safe and every time I get out of the car yeah. or I stop the car for Gwyn to get out of the car with the camera I double check I'm in four-wheel drive yeah. I double check the handbrake is all the way up I double check it's in park yes okay and I'm no I must know that car is absolutely secure mm. so then I jump out of the car and room service oh nice and early here we go thank you Ha, 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 ha. Uh, scones, please, next. <laughs> don't, forget. don't forget the strawberry and the cream. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Since we don't have it. Um, yes. So that's the first thing you go, you know, when you're in those, those situations where there, if you're in a situation where there's lots of vehicles and, and or very steep and that kind of thing, you just got to think safety, 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 safety. You, you cannot have something go wrong in that regard. It's just not worth it. Yes. Wide angle lenses, um, when getting a vehicle going up and down a hill, if you just have the road surface and you just have the vehicle, mm. the camera's terrible yes. at giving an idea on how steep it is. Well, a lot of people just go and stick an action camera on there, and we'll get to the action camera story okay. a bit later, but a lot of people just stick an action camera and then they fast forward going up a hill, but, you know, it gets monotonous. It gets monotonous. Action cameras are very monotonous, so you can stick one on the front of your vehicle, but really, realistically, Unless you want to bore the bejeebas out of your audience, you can use little clips and each clip is a second and a half, maybe two seconds, maybe three seconds of something interesting when you go over a rise and you suddenly see the sea or, or you suddenly see the other next mountain or something like that. But to actually have it on a car is dead boring because there's no perspective. Yes. If you do put it on the bumper, have part of the car visible okay. because that gives some perspective with foreground vehicle moving, background vehicle still or or vice versa, depending on the vehicle. Or what following the another vehicle. Or following, like we did in the dunes. Yes. Or following another vehicle. Nice way of getting a tracking shot, moving shot of another vehicle is to put an action camera, but then you've got to get as close as humanly possible yeah. to the other vehicle. And, and then even safety you. Safety comes into. Safety comes into. Even you, you were driving close behind yes. me. A safe distance, but it was close. Yes. You would never normally drive that close behind no. another vehicle. But we, we, we but, made it safe. 
we checked, we knew exactly no, we knew, where we were we'd driving. No, we knew we already driven it because yes. we were, you can't just go wildly in the dunes, very difficult driving and right behind somebody, it's too dangerous. So in that situation I said, we're going to do that loop again, shove the camera on it. Yeah. Because we knew exactly, it wasn't dangerous, there were no really steep, no, there was nothing, to, you know. So, and we got very nice tracking shots. Yeah. Again, late afternoon, magic lights. Yes. Because uh, when the sun's very high, the light's very flat. And again, the higher the sun, the lower the perspective because the shadows aren't deep. So, now, but I'm going to bring you back to the mountain shoot, right? Mm. So, what are, I, I know you've got a pet hate with zooming in or taking a shot and zooming out. It's, yes. it's, it's something that you use very, very seldom. And I've, I saw, I think it was your Africa shoot was the first time I've seen you use it in a long time. But you, you, you had the animal, and you wanted to show the perspective of the <clears throat> where, width. Where, of, okay, so now, so but you make for a, a long point. shot mm -hmm. for these mountain passes. Yes, the a long shot would give you that perspective of the how steep. I it is. actually, I very rarely use because zooms, a zoom where you we change focal length during yeah. filming, is a bit amateurish. So you got to be careful yeah. with it because if you do it too much, it's just yes. it's amateurish. You don't see it in Hollywood. You rarely see zooms in Hollywood. Occasionally you might see a slower one, but you don't see a lot of them. However, every now and again it works. And there was one shot in when we took the 6x6 through Oman yes. when I did that. Yes. We went around this, the, 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 there was this road on the other side of a valley, and there was incredible vista. Yes. It was just in stupid in vis vista. Infinity, yeah. So then I actually did a pullback, slow pullback, not too fast, revealing it. Yeah. But that was a real, there were, there, if you're going to use a zoom, make sure there's a reason for it. Yes. Just doing it, amateurish. That's how I feel. Right, so let's, we, we then passed down, down that incredible pass and we started exploring. For the next two days, we kind of were in rocky terrain, wadi terrain. Mm. Now, for those of you who don't know what a wadi is, uh, wadi is, in Arabic, is basically, it's a dry riverbed. So, the terrain that we were in, the Hajar mountain range, yes, a lot of rain had come through, so most of the, the, the tracks in the wadis were washed away. So we're very bouncy, very rocky. Again, what, what is your advice to take something like that? And, and again, we're in these canyons. Mm. So we've got these massive walls and the mm. colors are changing. It's green, it's red, and then it's brown. Mm. What is your advice to shoot something like that and give the experience? Okay, you have to look at what's interesting. Yeah. What around me is interesting. The, the subject is the vehicles and the track. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. But, but that's we know about those. We know the vehicles. We're familiar with the vehicles. They're driving. What is interesting about the terrain? So, for example, if the ground is, has an interesting texture, it's rocky, then get the camera close to the ground and put the ground in the foreground. So now that becomes part of the scene. Yeah. This. So you might have rocks or something close in the foreground and the vehicle a little bit further away and then the mountains in the background. It's all about perspective. Yeah. If I've got a side of a mountain that's very, very, uh, some of the mountains there go this deep, coppery, yeah. almost greenish, yeah. you know, it's every like now a, and again. Like a, like a, a bronze, it was a bronze or yeah. copper that, yes, that, that copper, tarnished. Yes, a copper green, to, yeah. exactly. Try and find a piece of that and put it in the foreground. Or alternatively, if you can't do that, you've got this mountain, which is this rich color, yeah. and the road is a flat white-ish, yeah. then get a shot where you get this brilliant one, this dark color, yeah. light vehicle, light road. Yes. And we found that tree in the middle that. of nowhere, right? It was tree, it, it was, was, it was a, rocks, mm. tree, and like a dune, just yes. put underneath the tree. Yes, so the tree becomes the character, because yes. the, the tree is making the landscape. Yeah. What is so you so you ask yourself what is making this landscape? Gee, those are nice trees. They're interesting shapes. That's the character of the landscape, whether it be rocks, trees, whatever. Okay. Then generally, because we obviously we camped every single night mm. round the campfire, um, it, people find it very difficult to be able to record and and give that because that's when you all getting together, right? You, right. So you've been in a car, everybody's split up, and you yeah. want to try and get that togetherness, that ambiance, the banter kind of stuff, the banter mm -hmm. kind of stuff. You know, you can't just put a camera down and just roll camera. No. Main reason for that is a you have lots of people. If you if you want to record a banter, you need to get about as close as the camera is to us now. Yeah. You need to see faces. The key between when when somebody is speaking and the and the audio, you're able to hear what they're saying 
you need to be able to see their eyes mm. and that's crucial because when you look at somebody talk you talk to somebody yes. you look into their eyes it's the same with a screen if you've got somebody talking and you can see their eyes and they're talking the audience will automatically home in on them yes. and the audio homes in as well it's Very unconscious important. but it does it so you have to if you're gonna record banter get in close yeah. you number one rule get in close very close if yeah. necessary yeah close because it's intimate and you can hear well if you're using microphones mic sound is the biggest problem yeah without that question. was my next question about sound biggest how do you problem. overcome that because we're sitting we're talking right now and the breeze is slowly but surely beginning to stop and i'm a little concerned about the wind muff i have on that yeah. dead rat i have on that microphone it can handle about this breeze anymore and it yeah. will start okay so we'll carry on yeah so wind protection on the microphone it's yeah. just absolutely vital and even some of the good wind dead rats don't work terribly well in yeah. high winds so it's vital and also a microphone that is reasonably directional so um yeah. otherwise but you're you just point picking it, up lots point of it away so the wind is behind the camera do you, you you can you can reduce two two things you can do with reducing wind noise yeah face away from the camera reduces it to a point yes only if the the dead rat covers the whole microphone Correct. okay be careful of that and the other thing is that many microphones have a low pass filter okay. the frequency created by wind hitting a microphone is a low frequency the low pass removes that low frequency and then it attenuates better for voice okay. those are two things you can do to reduce wind noise and we're probably starting to get some right now yeah my yeah. guess is because it's well, come up while we've been speaking like we say it's it's yeah. the it's it's the most difficult part of filming is not Sound. the actual capturing a picture. Can I say one other thing? Yes. This is, the, and I teach film on my Udemy. I have a series of film courses, online film courses. They're not expensive. I think I've got six up there. Yeah. And the most important single lesson I teach in every single course is this. Mm. This is for free. Audio is more important than video. Yes. And it is impossible to get this through to people because when you're editing audio leads the story if you're hearing well you're hearing what people are saying the music the sound effects never ever remove sound effects and replace it with music yeah. ever I rant about this yes. no. ever the sound is the ambience and that's the emotion the and way right now there's music playing so you can't hear what he's saying <laughs> <laughs> so audio is more important so you need a good microphone yeah get a good microphone before you get a good camera Good. There you go. And it's beafilmmaker.com. Beafilmmaker.com. Yeah, Thank you go. for that. Thank so you. you've got it on your you've got it on your channel, my guys. Go and check it out. I know my missus has 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 been paid paid subscription, but she hasn't done it yet. Yeah, time is a problem. If we can give um, her a kick later. You, but it doesn't. <laughs> you can start, and if it takes you a year to do the course, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Once it's you're there. once you're in, it's there. It's you there. can just and all refresh yourself. All there. Right. So. Now getting to so that's been pretty relaxed. We've got time because mountains don't move and right. Vehicles you can place and replace and replace the only thing that you've got is the light, right? So this guy. yes, the Sun is is the only thing that's chasing you there But pretty much you can do if you've got control like we've got control of the vehicles I can jump in and say Sean just drive there quickly come back go back or forward you have come back. control You've got control yes. now we moved on to Platinum Heritage and we did the morning film shoot over there yeah. with the sun coming up, balloons in the sky, Oryx at the right place, dunes are red, very dewish that night so everything was fresh and crisp and everything like that and you had 15 minutes to pull it all together. We've got second, tighten that. Yeah. When photographing a sunset or sunrise, it moves incredibly quickly. One literally has seconds to get the shot. Pressure! <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <awesome contraction. laughs> uh, the light, as we arrived, it, it was before sunrise, and I realized that the window of filming here was probably max 20 minutes, from before sunrise to after sunrise. Yeah. And I must say it was absolutely glorious. Now the cameras that I'm using are extremely good in low light mm. and extremely good in after light. So after the sun goes down, I'm shooting for another hour, close to another hour after yeah. the sun's gone down. 
and that's called blue light. Yeah. So you get the warm yellow glow of, of, you get a blue light before sun comes up, then you get the warm yellow glow, and then the same in the evening. It's longer in the evening than it is in the morning. So that yeah. shoot, I was going flat out getting imagery yeah. because I knew the window was this. Yeah. But I, uh, the shots turned out beautiful. They're, they're running around, gorgeous. Past, the, lens um, past this, past light this. Light is everything. Yeah. Light is everything. Mm. Audio and light. Yeah. The two keys. Yeah, it's, to, it, if the sun's up there, it just goes for it. Just, there's no definition. So uh, it was a good experience. I enjoyed yeah. that enormously, actually. Yeah. yeah. No, it was good fun, I think. I think, well, we're over here. We're preempting that the editing went well and everything is absolutely gorgeous. And yes. uh, we should if say it was, this is you'd be, we're about you'd to be leave seeing, today. You'd so be this seeing is this stuff. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. We moved on. Now we're going into the dunes. Now, like you said, we mentioned earlier, dune driving. And then this is action. Now, this is where action cameras yes. do work well. <clears throat> Drones work exceptionally well because yeah. it gives you that different perspective, a little bit higher. Okay. And it shows the definition and the shadows yes. in the dunes. Yes. Talk to me about your action okay, camera. Okay, action cameras. <laughs> action, you know, action cameras are really good at Put them on a little tripod. You've got one yes. on a little tripod, and you just you just stick it in the sand. Yes. Just stick it in the sand. You don't even need to hardly need to frame it up. Kind of yeah. approximately. Make sure because it's close to the ground with a little tripod, you get the texture of the sand in the foreground, and then you drive a vehicle past it, and it looks fantastic. It can't not look fantastic if because you're shooting you've got, it at 120 frames or 60 or frames. Or you slow it down. And yes. you can slow it down That's as it right. comes past. And it's all action, action, yes. action. You have foreground. You have the vehicle, hopefully you've got nice movement with the wheels and the yes. sand and everything, and you've got blue sky in the background. Yes. So you've got the three elements. Yes. Okay, sound on action cameras generally is poor, yes. so you have to record the similar scenes with an ordinary camera with a good microphone so you've got good audio yes. to fit in. If you rely on action camera audio, generally speaking, it's pretty no. awful. No. Okay. Uh. And then if you put it on the vehicle itself, different positions, not just on the bonnet, High up is really good. Yes. High up on the on your roof, on your tent or something, looking down at the bonnet, it's really, really good. Get one at the back, pointing backwards. Make sure you get sky and ground in it, and have somebody drive behind you a bit. Yeah. That kind of thing. So change the position. Use a vehicle camp. to form another vehicle, basically. Yes. Also, what I like to do is I, we didn't manage to do it on this. Yeah, trip. we did it if on I've the got last two, one. We on did six by six. Yes. Two vehicles I next to each other. I actually lost an action camera. Oh, did you? Trip on that one, yes. So you got two, two, two tracks next to each other like this. Put an action camera and stick it on the door of the one, and just, and then yeah. with this camera, which is the, which is the subject, just drive next to it, and then go back, and then drive forward. So you've got a shot now of yes. entering frame, tracking with frame, leaving frame. Yeah. So you get this guy to travel and make sure constant that, that, speed. That vehicle, there is no, now you filming without any of that vehicle being no. in the picture. Good point. It's got to be full frame of the star vehicle. It is just the star vehicle and watch for shadows because yes. I've done beautiful, <laughs> brutal, I think, wow, and I get into the editing room and there's a great big fat yeah. shadow of the Well, you want, you want the audience the to basically ask the question, how did he film that? Actually not. You don't? You, no. You don't want them to ask that question at all. He's just you, driving around with a big boom pole no, that's filming himself No, like but that. the point is that I, the way I look at it is, if the audience doesn't notice the camera, yes, okay, better. It's like drone right. shooting. I, I ask the question because you, I want to, because you, I'm a creator. I want to create that. Yes, you ask that Your question. Your 360 but, camera boom camera that you've been using on the Troopy for the last two trips, I think yes. now. That, you that had me boggled a little bit, and then I realized, it, ah, got it. Okay, so your audience creators excluded yeah. mustn't say that's a drone uh, yes. that's an action camera okay. you don't want them to do that because it takes them yep. away from the actual all this is is a really nice shot of this vehicle yeah. Yeah. that's all it is but you got yeah. it using a, I... a camera mounted on another vehicle and <laughs> when a camera moves with the subject it's very nice mm. you get that just kind of perspective of movement which is really nice when the camera moves as well Right, which leads me straight into, we're in the dunes and, and a lot of people then will run time lapses, especially in the dunes, because mm. the colors change, you've got very long shadows. Mm. You don't have that in the mountain ranges mm. because the mountain normally would give you the shadow. Now I've got a shadow of yes. myself or yes. of a vehicle of and a it's incredibly road. long. Yes, yes. And it stretches and stretches and stretches as yes. the sun rises or, yes. or sun sets or mm. what 
time lapse. I know that you've just done a time lapse. We actually filmed something about time lapse over here that will mm. go onto your one onto of your, onto one of your mm. courses. Mm. So don't want to give away too much. Go again to beafilmmaker.com and you can see Andrew sitting on this glorious beach talking about time lapse. But just quick, one or two do's or don'ts with time lapse. You're looking for something that's moving. So you're accelerating so, and that becomes the subject. So your subject matter clouds is lovely scene. Or clouds or sun. Water doesn't work because water goes and it's moved too fast and it looks a bit odd. So all we I, tried. We tried, no, but the tide, you That's tried a with the tidal change, yeah. So Sean tried with the tide and it didn't, just the tide per heavier here is very odd and it didn't work. That would have been stunning because we would have had suddenly this whole bay empties. Well, the it goes, goes 200 away. meters out, yes. Yeah, so suddenly this. That's a good time lapse. Clouds as well, yeah. even better. Yeah. So you're looking for something that's moving, it's going to be shadows and, and sun, clouds are often, but if you've got objects that are moving in your time lapse, like a cityscape, you want lots of them. Yeah. Have you seen so those cityscapes where cars. all the cars and all the traffic and, and it's people. really, yes. really busy. Intersections with people. But it has really to be, ones. also time lapse also has to be, there has to be relativity. So some Would of you the, like another cup or something? No, thank you. Are Lofty! You know, he wants another cup. Yes, sir. I don't need that. another cup. So there has, to be, there has to be parts of it that are still and parts of it that are moving. So yep. you get relative motion. Thank you. I won't have none. I'm, I'm good. Are you I'm sure? Good. Thank you. You would like another one? Mm. Right. Um, oh, the other thing that I, you know, I tried it and it didn't really work. I gave you the footage of it. We had that beautiful Land Rover. Now there's no movement whatsoever in the sky. There's no movement yes. on the Land Rover. Yes. But I put it on for an hour because the sun was changing. So the color, that Land Rover had mm. a specific color to it. Yes. And as it was, as the sun was coming up, the Land Rover was actually changing color. Yes. And I tried to capture that with a time lapse of from it becoming like an orange color to then becoming the real color as the yes. sun got higher. Yes. Now, it didn't really work. But I think is the that reason... something you could do instead of having a subject that's changing and using that instead of running film to watch? The... I don't think that really worked terribly well because the eye is a funny thing. Mm. It doesn't notice color change very okay. well because it adapts to it. Yes. So while there is a change in color, to me I looked at that time last and thought, mm, okay, the car looks nice, yeah. but I didn't immediately go, oh. Yeah. You, you, that's what a time so lapse had is there, all had about. Had there been had there been a reflection of the sun in the door of the vehicle, and different that moved story. would have been that might have been different because that would so have changed. So it changed color, but it wasn't a time. To me, time yeah. lapses must be a oh yes. Your brain goes oh, uh, okay. with a time lapse. Yes, and it okay. didn't with that one. Mm. No, I, 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 you know, some you some you oh, some you, you win, some you lose. I promise, <laughs> some you win, you some you lose. Most you lose. Most you lose. Yes, um, time lapses are difficult. Yeah, I, I mean. <laughs> The amount of footage that I've got that is that you can't use, that it's throwaway footage, and you think, but oh, if you, I've got the best shot in the world, you and you get into the editing studio, and it's like, oh. Oh. but if you don't do that, you don't learn. And yes. I go through exactly the same thing. Mm. I'll find a time lapse that I think, wow, and I go into the yeah. into the final edit and think, actually, it's dull, yeah. and don't use it. It Perfect. happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. Great. So we're coming to the end of the trip. We've come out to Silla. I gave you a short run around Silla from the pinks to the rocky mm. to mm. this gorgeous beach over here. Final thing on basic, you know, outdoor filming and weather and the influences of weather on camera gear, not filming, making a picture. Mm. So you're, we're out here, uh, salty uh, weather. You're in, yes. you're in, you're in Australia. Mm. It's, it's mm. dusty. It's, mm. what are you doing to ensure that your gear is pristine? Before you before you get up before you put the lens on. Yes, I uh, use a blower brush, and every single time with a with a, uh, a camera where you're removing the lens, mm. dots spots go onto the CCD and mess up, and it's extremely difficult to sort out yeah. in post. So I'm using it when if I change a lens, I use a blower brush. Mm -hmm. I never use liquids or anything on the CCD. I use a blower brush, very very high powered powerful yeah. blower brush. Off clipped. And if I'm changing a lens, I do it inside a car, I protect myself from the wind and I do it extremely quickly. Because yes. that's the biggest danger. Getting muck and stuff on the on the CCD is the biggest issue. I'll never leave a camera out. So during the day, if we're just not filming, I won't Straight put a camera on a tripod and just leave it out. Yeah. I won't. I'll take it off and put it in the car. Mm -hmm. um, because 
you know, it, they are weather weather resistant and that kind of thing. I like to keep my my, my machinery must be it must be. I like it clean. I don't like it dusty. I, d I like it exact exactly. So, um, but I don't take any special precautions with that, apart from silica gel pockets, uh, three or four in each of my camera bags. That's good. that's all I that's really do. That's good advice. Very good advice. The silica pockets, they, they do make a, the packets make a mm. big difference in the camera gear. Yeah, and when I store it at home, mm -hmm. silica all over the place. Okay. Oh, there you go. Particularly if you live in the UK, any any climate, but um, even when we lived in Johannesburg, my mem uh, my father lost a camera because he had packed it away and hadn't used it in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a, a, a Canon video camera, okay. wrecked. Wow. Purely because of a bit of moisture in yeah. a cupboard. Yeah. Mm. There you go. You'd be surprised. And it's yeah. a dry a dry environment. That's a fairly dry environment. Yeah. Yes. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. Andrew's show has been running, probably two episodes, and. Uh, this is the follow-on from that, but I want to thank you once again as a mate. Pleasure, it's been mate. always, thank you, always thank awesome you. spending time with you. I got to come, come out to Australia, and you come show we me. We need to find you a vehicle. We need to find anybody out there with a vehicle and a nicely equipped vehicle. Nothing yeah. fancy, but nicely equipped vehicle to loan to Sean for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, minimum two weeks because we'd do something proper. Yes. Um, between July and October in Australia, please come forward because yeah. I need. I'm looking for somebody who could donate a vehicle for for your that would use, be awesome. and then we'll set up a we'll set up a just and we'll just do a bush track. Yes. We'll just do a remote bush track, just pure oh. outback, that kind of thing. Lovely. Yeah. Love that, it. That love would, it. What love we'll it. be doing. Here comes your coffee. Eventually, at the end of the shoot. <laughs> Can't find, you can't find good help anywhere. You can't find good help these days. <laughs> right, guys, if you haven't you. subscribed to Andrew's channel, go and click on it right now. And remember, if it's dusty, drive it. Cheers.